Hello everyone! Welcome back to a much needed video. I know I have been MIA for quite some time. I apologize for that, but I am back for the time being. And the reason I am back is because I want to share Mermaid with you. I have never done Mermaid before, so I'm really excited. I'm also nervous to try to keep up with a 31-day challenge. So we'll see how that goes. If you've done Mermaid before, please let me know if you've had success, any like failures or any tips, if you like to do it, if you don't like to do it. I would love any input because every year my social media is flooded with everyone's cute Little Mermaid characters. So I thought this year, you know what? I want to give it a try. But I had to make it kind of entry level and I had to simplify it from my normal art process. So I want to share with you the supplies that I'm going to use this year and kind of the rules I put in place for myself to kind of make it easier to make it through the whole 30 days. 31 days. Yes, 31 days. But on a side note, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but my nails are stained pink. Please just disregard those if you can see it. There is nothing wrong with my nails. I just took off my gel polish and for some reason, the color I used, it stained my nails. So we will never be using that color again. But anyways, back to the most important thing, mermaid. So lately, it's been a little hard to kind of get into my art groove. I've been a little bit sick and I was working nights for a hot minute there, like three months. So I didn't even feel like a human being. So doing art was very, very hard, but now I'm not on nights anymore. So I'm kind of getting back to normal. But when I have had time to do art, I've kind of really been enjoying compartmentalizing everything into its own separate book or art journal. For example, I have two right here next to me that I've been working on. Um, so I have this little one here. It's a little cardboard baby book that I just cover in gesso um, and then paint on. And then I also have, this is a hardcover novel from the thrift store that I just kind of cut and made into a book. Um, so everything kind of has its own, I don't know, theme you would say. Like this one is all about eggs. This one is all collage. So I kind of wanted one all for Mermaid. I will do flips of these when they're all done. They are slow going, so it's gonna be a while before they come um, to YouTube, but I will do flips of these. That's another reason that I got excited. Like. I watch all these flip videos and I'm like, I don't have like an awesome book to like flip and show people and I would love for it to like kind of be themed. So it's another reason why I've kind of went to the book style. But anyways, I had a couple smaller books um, laying around the house, but I didn't feel like they were the right size for this project and I figured working small would probably benefit me to stick to the challenge because if it's smaller, it's going to take less time to theoretically do. So I went to the thrift store yesterday and sorry, I already started covering the front of it. Um, but this is a souvenir address book from the Wall Drug Store in South Dakota. I know this is a really famous place to go to. I don't know why it's famous. If anybody knows, let me know. Um, but anyways, I got this. It's just, it looks really old, like a really old address book. Um, but anyways, I ripped out all the signatures, so we got rid of that. So I was just left with this cover here, and then I made this two signature, um, insert to then go inside my book that will eventually look like this. Um, as far as the paper for this, I have really, really, really been trying not to buy any new art supplies this year. It has been a struggle because 
I have a problem with buying art supplies, so I'm trying to use stuff I already have here at home. So I was going through my stash. I have a stack. Actually, I have a basket full of all the papers that I love, but then I just have like a stack of papers and I'm like, I don't care what happens to these papers. So I'm like, let's see what we can do. So I started going through the papers that I like and I was just too precious about them. And I thought that they were too maybe expensive for an experimental project like this. So I went to my, I don't care what happens to these paper stack. And I came across this smooth Bristol paper from Hobby Lobby. Um, I've tried to use it in the past and I've absolutely hated it. But let me tell you, so far for this project, I absolutely love this paper. And it makes me want to do this idea in a similar way again with this paper. So I'm I'm glad I've kept the quote-unquote crappy paper. Um, so the ideas that I'm using this year um, to kind of jump off of um, come from two really amazing artists. They are both two of my favorite artists. One is Courtney Diaz. Um, she is on Instagram, not Instagram, well, yeah, she's on Instagram, but she's mostly on YouTube and Patreon. Absolutely amazing artwork. Um, she did a 100-day project where she would do her pages with watercolor first to kind of get rid of that fear of the blank page, and I thought that was such an ingenious idea. I'm like, I've never done mermaid, so I need something to kind of help me, so that's what I'm doing. I'm slapping down some watercolor on the page before I start drawing to kind of get rid of that fear of like, oh my god, oh my god, where am I going to put it? You know, what am I going to put it with? How am I going to color it? This kind of takes all of that out for me. And then another artist that I took an idea from was James Luke Burke on JLB Creative. He also has a really amazing YouTube channel. He did a grid where he broke down the different features of the mermaid and mermaid and you would just choose from each section to put your whole mermaid together and I thought oh my god that is ingenious and I already put parameters and rules on almost every project I do and I'm like how have I never tried this before so that's what I did I created my own it's very sloppy if you are interested in getting a nice version let me know. I can try to make that happen. I just thought it was going to take so much time to do that to show you guys today. And I just wanted to have that time to actually go into my drawings. So without further ado, I'm going to show you the mermaids. Why do I keep saying mermaid instead of mermaids? <laughs> I don't know. I'll show you the mermaids in my style that I'm going to do this year. And the supplies I'm going to use. So I thought... I was looking at my work and I do a lot of my little wonky characters wearing costumes, like hooded costumes. So I'm like, what if I made my person in an animal mermaid costume? I know it sounds really weird, but I love it. So I'm going with it. So what I did, this is an example. It's a very rough version of what they're going to look like, but basically... I will choose a little animal costume for my person to go into and then that animal costume will also have a mermaid tail. So to break this down for me, what I did was I sketched out a few different body styles to choose from. I played with a few different animal costumes that I could use. I didn't like all of them, and that's the best thing about the sketchbook, is you can kind of see what works, what you like, what you don't like. That's what I use mine for a lot. Um, my sketchbook, if you're curious, it is just a lined moleskin. I do prefer the lined, just because I like to make a lot of notes. Um, and I don't really do anything in my sketchbook that's that I need to scan or... I want to like put up on the wall or anything. It's really just an idea place for me. Um, so other than the body shape and the animal costume, I also 
then wanted to choose different hairstyles for a woman mermaid or if I wanted to do a merman I did hairstyles for a man and then I decided I'm just going to do one type of eye I'm going to stick with my style of eye where it's kind of just that oval eye with the big huge um, pupil and then a couple little mouths this I might like deviate from the mouths because I don't know I like a lot of different little emoji mouths so I might use some of those. I don't know yet. We'll see what happens. I feel like as I go, I'll get more creative and just go with it. And then I went through and drew out a few of the classic seashell bra. But these are my style of them. Different ones to choose from. And then where the body and the tail meet, I'm calling it the tail entry point. I kind of drew out some of those to choose from. A couple different... Um, fin shapes and then I also have a few scale ideas and then there's a person inside this costume so I also wanted arms to be sticking out of the costume so I kind of drew different options of how my person's arm would stick out of the costume and I think it's all going to depend on which little bra I use I did do one mermaid already I did it last night. It's not lined yet, so it might be a little hard to see, but I absolutely love it. It's probably hard to see. It'll be easier to see once I line it. Um, but I do have a little bear here with my little girl. She's got little fish covering up where the bra would normally be. And then I've got my tail here and her little arms sticking out the side of the costume. So I do need to touch up some of the colors like the white I think I'm gonna go in with a Posca pen and I do need to line it but I'm very excited for this I think it turned out great it was very easy to kind of just okay now I need to pick this and now I need to pick that and just put it all together <sighs> okay that was a lot of chatting so for the supplies I'm using this year obviously I'm using watercolor um, these are my favorites I re did my palette gosh it's been quite a while now so I just picked out my favorite colors <coughs> excuse me um, they are a huge mix I've got Paul Rubens I've got Daniel Smith some core Jane Davenport some Dale Rowney um, some Primas there is a lot of different stuff going on here. Oh, I got some Lucas, some Cotman. That's pretty much it. Yeah, so it's a big mashup. So obviously those. I did pick some Tombow colors. I do have a couple in my jet pen cart. I know I'm not supposed to buy supplies, but... I seen some liners and a couple of colors and I'm like okay maybe this will be the only thing I buy for a few months maybe it'll be okay um, I'm gonna use Tombow markers then I also have more permanent markers so I do have the fabric castell pit pens so I grab some of those out of my stash and then I do have some alcohol markers I am not going to use my Copic markers because those are way too nice, way too expensive, but I got these Tombow alcohol markers in the clearance for like a dollar a piece, so I don't really care if the nibs get super messed up. They're also kind of like really starting to dry out anyways, so I want to use them. That was another thing I wanted to do. I wanted to try to use supplies. I don't use a lot, so I grabbed some of these. I did test these on some of the scrap paper. I am going to have to be careful because it does bleed through a little bit on this paper. Only the dark colors, like the super light colors, like the pinks, um, or these like pastel blues, they don't bleed through. But this really dark teal and say like this purple, I got to be careful because I don't want to ruin all my cute little mermaids and mermans. I feel like this is too many supplies, but, you know, what are you going to do? Then I went through my colored pencils and picked out all my favorites. This is way too many 
favorites. You know what I'm saying, my friend? I have two kinds in here. I've got some polychromos by Faber-Castell, and I have the Prismacolors. So Prismacolor have been my favorite for years. I still have the set that I bought in high school, not high school, middle school. My dad bought me these um, Prismacolors in middle school, and I still have them. They are like little nubs now, but um, yeah, the white and the black are like this big at this point. Middle school was so long ago, like we're talking over 20 years ago, so I love those, but while I was swatching color pencils, I feel like I'm starting to like the polychromos better, but we'll see what happens. I put them both in there because I wanted the option of both. I also have some sketching supplies. Of course, I need my pencil sharpener my kneaded eraser. I love these erasers where you just click them up. This is like a big square one. And then I also have my Tombow Mono Zero, this itty bitty little round one. And then for sketching, I just have these 4H pencils. And then I've got Pilot Color Enos in purple, red, and blue. I want to get a pink. That's also in my jet pen cart. I got a problem. Anyways, that's what I'm using for sketching. I did use the red last night for my first mermaid and it worked great, but on some areas of color, like it was kind of hard to see. In my dining room, it doesn't have the best light in there. So at night I'm like, okay, am I losing my sight or is this light just horrible? And I think the light's just horrible. And then I also have some liners. Like I said, there's some color liners that I want to get. Copic makes like a wine color, like a sienna color, a navy. Like they make so many different ones. I love the Copic liners. And I usually don't use black in my acrylic paintings. I usually use Payne's Gray. So I thought it'd be really cool to get either a gray liner or a blue liner. So we'll see. Um, so I am going to be using these Copics, just to name a few. I've also got the Pentel. What is this? The Hybrid Technica. I really like this one, but I don't think it's waterproof. Um, I've also got a few Unipin fine liners. And then for black and white, I've got some paint pens, as well as some jelly rollers. I know everybody loves the Signal Uniball. I absolutely hate that pen. It is so finicky. Um, I will rather fight with a jelly roller than the Signal Ball one. And lastly, I have... Um, neon markers. These are Faber-Castell neon markers. I don't know what they are called. Like, like the type of marker it is. I don't know. I just got these at Hobby Lobby on clearance, but I love them. They're kind of like a milky. I probably shouldn't use yellow. It's not the best example. They're like a milky color. Um, I like them. And I have some jelly pens, some more colors in the jelly rollers. I don't know how much I'll be using these. I also feel like I need to get a system where I can see all my pens and pencils at once. Otherwise, when they're in these bags, I'm more likely not to use them. It's just like in my art room, if the supply is not right in front of me, I will probably not grab it and use it. So. Those are the supplies. That's my plan. I'm very excited. I will eventually paint this with acrylic paint. I think I already said that. But I will start doing flips of my mermaids that I do. Um, and then maybe a few I will sketch live with you. I hope that you have an amazing, beautiful, wonderful day. And until next time, bye.